I'm here in South Florida, where we're known for plenty of sunshine. But, unfortunately, you know what else we're known for nowadays? Way, way too many iguanas. Invasive species. They don't belong here. And believe me when I tell you, we're inundated with them. Millions upon millions of iguanas. But, we missed a golden opportunity a few years ago to com almost completely eradicate the iguanas. And I'll tell you when it was and how we missed that opportunity. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a slight cold. Anyway, what happened was in the winter of 2010, we had a very, very big cold snap. We had about about a week, I'd say, if I remember right, but at least five days in a row of under 40 degree temperature, where it never went a much above 40 degrees. Now, normally what happens <coughs> with the iguanas, <coughs> when the temperature drops down to around 40 degrees or below, they, they go into a deep hibernation. They're like, uh, basically like zombies. For all intents and purposes, they look dead. They fall out of the trees, they lie on the ground, people think they're dead. But as soon as the sun warms up above 40 degrees, they come back to life again. But in the case of 2010, there was so many days in a row of below 40 degree weather. I mean, even in the daytime, I don't think it got much above 40 degrees. Um, that, it, it pretty much wiped out almost virtually at least 99.9% .9 of the iguana population because I remember <clears throat> after that uh, freeze I don't I don't recall seeing any iguanas I thought they were completely eradicated and it took I'd say it was at least a couple of years before I even saw my first iguana again and I remember it because <clears throat> I was surprised wow how the hell did I iguana make it through the freeze um, and, and I think the only reason why <coughs> some of the iguanas uh, lived on, I think it's two reasons maybe, is some people foolishly took pity on the iguanas and brought them indoors so they would survive the frost. And the other reason is, I think, down on the lower keys, where the frost, it, it didn't get quite as cold as here, there was a higher survival weight rate of the iguanas, and they made their way north on the Keys, because, you know, they can swim, too, by the way. Um, and they eventually ended up back in South Florida. So, here's my solution. Well, we should have done it after the last freeze. What should have happened? <clears throat> the Florida Wildlife Commission should have put a bounty of $100 on each iguana and made... And publicize where the people could take the, the iguana heads, you know, to show that they were killed. And uh, and it made it easy for them to uh, collect the money and everything. Now you're wondering, that's a lot of money for one lousy iguana. Well, believe me when I tell you, there were virtually no iguanas left after that f frost. Uh, I think, I honestly think that program... <coughs> in the first year after they would have instituted it after that uh, deep freeze I doubt if it would have I doubt if it would have gotten much more than about a hundred thousand dollars like maybe there was a thousand iguanas out there but uh, what happened was after I uh, started about four or five years ago they just multiplied like wildfire now they're everywhere you know I mean if I if I look around here a little bit I probably could see an iguana or two I had a pair of binoculars, especially on the other side of this lake. Oh, I think I see one. Actually, I do. I think, I'm not sure, but I think I see one there. It's not unusual. So that's my solution, uh, suggestion. In the future, <clears throat> the next time Mother Nature does us a huge favor of having a, f uh, a freeze for like several days in a row, like five days or more, where it basically wipes out the iguana population except for a small handful. Um, my suggestion is Florida Live Wildlife Commission put a hundred dollar bounty on each iguana. So that, in the future, like, like me, 
when I saw that iguana a few years ago, um, or after the freeze, a couple of years after the freeze, instead of standing there wondering what the hell is that iguana, uh, how did they make it, I, I would see a $100 bill right there. Man, you think I wouldn't go after it? <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, that's, that's my suggestion, is the next time there's a, a big freeze of several days where virtually all the iguanas are wiped out, at that point, instead of relaxing and figuring the problem is over, no, take advantage of it, Florida Wildlife Commission. Put a hundred dollar bounty on each iguana. And if we had done that then, today we would have virtually no iguanas uh, all over the place right now because they're causing a lot of damage. And um, in fact, I think I might do my part. I've been thinking about getting a blowgun. <laughs> You know, you don't want to use a pellet gun on, um, on the iguanas here because we're in a populated area. People see you with a rifle, <clears throat> and, uh, man, you can get trouble. I mean, people, they'll call the, you'll get the cops. Eventually, you, I, if I was using a pellet gun, I'd get the cops called out on me. So, and then uh, there's the famous uh, iguana man. He uses the, uh, the noose on the end of a fishing line. So uh, just to be different, I think I might, I might get a blowgun and try that. Give me a thumbs up if you think I should hunt iguanas via blowguns. I'll put the videos on if you want. And so anyway, that's it. That's my solution. We missed the golden opportunity to virtually eradicate the, iguana, uh, the iguanas in South Florida. And if we ever, and I'm, I'm sure we will eventually, it will, the next time we have a freeze of like four, five, or more days in a row, of below 40 degree weather, where it never gets above, above about 40. At that point, don't rest on your laurels, uh, Florida. Have the wild, Florida Wildlife Commission a $100 bounty on each iguana. Okay, we'll see you guys later.